Hi everybody. Today we are going to discuss about the boot protocol that's going to be used in Omni Exchange and how it will enable us to build different cache coherent systems that's actually uh, scalable. Now this is a collaborative work between Western Digital and Sci-Fi. I'm Atish from Western Digital Research. Here's a brief agenda for the uh, talk. So briefly, we'll discuss about different uh, systems and slowly we'll move to the management server and we'll talk about the unified boot process and the boot protocol. Now, this talk is not about OmniExtend protocol, which is a cache current open source cache current protocol that sends uh, serialized tiling packets over Ethernet. So if you want to know more about uh, boot the protocol, you can take a look at the dance talk from last risk five summit there are other talks from paul and wes as well that explain the nitty-gritty details of the tile link or omni extend protocol in this talk we'll focus on how the software system would look like when we build the omni extend uh, different omni extend architectures now those architectures can be a point-to-point -point architecture or a bunch of memory or storage systems attached to the compute node or a combination of those via a programmable switch or a dumb switch. Now, with a system that has multiple nodes, there are different possibilities that we can build the system in a way. One of those is a single operating system model where all the different systems, all the different nodes would come up uh, and boot a single instance of operating system. All the CPUs from every node can access all the memory on all the nodes. This is uh, how, in today's world our numa systems works so every individual nodes would act or uh, would uh, users would see them as a numa node and then they can access uh, any memory of from any node as numa uh, memory now uh, as uh, it's widely known numa models are not scalable beyond a few nodes on the same uh, machine that's why the better scalable model would be an independent nodes model where individual nodes would actually boot uh, independent uh, instances of the operating system and then share uh, a, a portion of memory which can be configurable over the omni extend fabric. And this would actually lead to uh, have hundreds of nodes together as the protocol just requires all the hardware to be support omni extend and the uh, ethernet and uh, this would actually help us to build those cache current scalable systems that we're talking about now to give a brief overview of how uh, boot process looks like there are uh, multi stage boot process that uh, are actually used and described to boot i'm not going to go over the details but to uh, i want to focus at one point like one stage which is the last stage in the machine mode which actually resident in the memory even after when a uh, kernel has already booted. Now that stays is key here because what we want is our individual nodes boot independent until that stays. And if it is a single operating system model or a SO system, all of the non-booting nodes actually jump uh, in that stage, which is open SBI. All of the non-booting stages uh, on nodes would jump to the boot stage and the instance uh, boots uh, node where the OpenSV instance running and that OpenSV instance would jump to Linux and that, that the, that's how we achieve single instance of uh, Linux running. And the idea here is to follow the same boot process, follow the same uh, boot stages to boot a IN system as well. The advantage here is uh, between SO and IN system, we don't have to switch the hardware. Just by simple configuration, on, on the next reset, your hardware can be configured as a different NUMA topologies or different, uh, completely different independent node model. Now, with the independent node model, what happens is every node, uh, there is no concept of boot node or non-boot node. Every node is a boot node because it, it uh, boots uh, the operating system independently. Once the operating system booted, they share the memory using a shared memory. And that's achieved by a kernel driver that's present in the, that will be added in the kernel. 
Now, to as I said, uh, the objective here is to configure in a uh, build up this uh, system in such a way and have an unified boot, boot process such that with a simple configure reconfiguration of the system can be done by an external entity that allows us to uh, experiment and explore a lot of different architectures without actually rebuilding the hardware the same hardware can be reused for different purposes and actually tell us whether uh, a system is a better or worse without uh, dealing with hardware changes that's why we introduced a, a new entity called management server that actually tells individual nodes what kind of role it, it has, whether it's supposed to be a boot node, whether it's supposed to boot independent uh, Linux or independent operating systems. Now, that management server basically talks to all the endpoints via raw Ethernet frames. So as long as that management server is on the network, is on the same network, uh, it should work. So there is no, uh, you can technically implement it in one of those nodes, but it doesn't have to be. And you can implement it in the programmable switch, which will give you more granular control over uh, how things would be controlled. For the first person uh, for in our system, Omni Extend system that we are building, uh, we'll be implementing in a separate program as in on a x86 machine that attached to the same switch to reconfigure uh, the system, node topo system topology between SO and IN systems. Now, these are the type of messages uh, that actually boot protocol has defined. Some of them are uh, need to be broadcasted because at that time there won't be any uh, information available about the management server node. And then there would, some of them would actually contain a payload, which is the device tree. The device tree is a standard uh, hardware information, a file that actually, a binary file that actually uh, describes the hardware in detail. And that's what uh, currently all of the RISC V subsystem relies on. So entire Linux depends on the device tree. Now, this is a sequence diagram that actually shows how the booting of single SO system should work. Now, to divide it, uh, a, in the first stage, both OmniExtend node and a management server will talk to each other by raw Ethernet frames would exchange packets that would let them aware of what kind of topologies can be built and what are the uh, nodes and uh, what are the individual nodes capabilities are. That's how management server decides how the system would look like or e the user would configure the management server to let the system uh, uh, let the system know how it should look like. Based on that, if it is a uh, single operating system model, it would send uh, the a combined device tree of all the node topologies with an additional information whether what kind of model the user wants it to be built. That's how uh, if it is a single operating system model, then uh, we introduce additional states to achieve uh, a more resilient software. And uh, at that point, all the non-boot nodes would actually go ahead and configure their channels. And then once that's done, then boot node will go and configure that channel. Once all the TX and RX channel of OmniExtend are configured, we enable the tiling endpoints in a specific given order to avoid any kind of uh, deadlocks because of the dining philosopher problem. Now, once the tiling over uh, Ethernet is enabled, now all of the individual nodes can actually access the other memories. So they, if it's a single, uh, since it's combined address space and single instance of operating system is booting, then we quickly, uh, then we reconfigure the memory addresses and then reconfigure the cacheable memory address and then all the non-boot node would jump to actually the boot node and then from there it would take to Linux. So the, uh, the last stage would be it would jump to Linux using, uh, it would jump to the boot node of uh, uh, the boot node and then from there it would jump to Linux. Now for the independent system model, uh, all of them would happen parallelly. It would go pro proceed as it is would have done in the normal case. Once, uh, and you could see there is all everything happening parallelly, the concept of, there is no concept of boot node or non-boot node. And all of them actually boot and uh, boot into Linux 
independently and then the shared memory is uh, achieved by a driver now that's all is uh, i have to explain how the boot protocol will look like now this this allows us to explore a lot of things in future some of them are uh, different numa topologies uh, building a node hot plug or a fault tolerant systems uh, the different approaches also we can adopt for how to build independent uh, node model and then it also allows us to explore omni extend memory only nodes which can be served as a disaggregate memory so combining all of these this presents a excellent opportunity for system architects to build a cache current systems and then make it scalable without a performance impact that's all i have today for the talk thank you for attending